I'm here in the uh, Jaarbeurs at Media Plaza and I'm talking to Jasper Nijens. And why do I talk to him? Because he basically showed us how to get version 9 of the Tesla autopilot in Europe. And also he told us a lot about interesting things about what uh, is behind the, the Tesla system and how you can uh, get into it yourself. So uh, Jasper, thank you very much for coming all the way to the Netherlands. Um, so we're going to talk about who is he, what does he do, and what did he, uh, how did he hack the Tesla, and what is about version nine. So that's what you can expect in this talk. Okay, Jasper. Um, first about you. Uh, you're a uh, Linux uh, Linux junkie. What do you do uh, for normal life? So um, I uh, am the founder of uh, managing director of uh, Linux Belgium, and uh, we uh, provide uh, mostly consultancy services um, to companies uh, doing uh, Linux. Uh, for system administration or for embedded Linux. Yes. So you do training in all over the place, uh, including the Netherlands. So if you want to know anything about Linux, uh, you're the guy to talk to. Okay, uh, you drive a Model X just like me, and you. when did you start to look into the system and what was behind the scenes? Well, uh, when I bought uh, the car, immediately I actually sent an email to Elon Musk asking for root access. <laughs> Mailing is maybe not the correct medium for him, but uh, he didn't get an answer. You didn't do it on Twitter? <laughs> no. <laughs> so um, that didn't happen. And uh, so I, I looked into how can I get roots uh, here, because uh, obviously I, I wanted to have roots on my own Linux car. Of course. How can you own a, a, a gadget and not have root access? Okay. So how many systems, are, how many computer systems are there, uh, big systems are there in the, in the Model X? So there are quite a few computer systems. First, there is the instrument uh, display, instrument cluster behind the steering wheel. Then there is the big screen, 19-inch, uh, which is called the, the CID, uh, central central uh, display, I think. Uh. And then there is um, the autopilot system. Um, all these three systems run Linux. Uh, there is also a gateway. Uh, there is a parrot um, for uh, uh, getting the internet connection, the gateway between the autopilot as well. Um, these gateway systems run runs on um, free ethos uh, which is a small embedded uh, operating system um, but so the big systems they run uh, Linux yep. mm -hmm. very interesting yeah. so the, and you can basically get access to uh, the network of the computer of the of the computer <laughs> on the computer on wheels um, how do you how can you get access to it from inside from outside so um, if you yeah first you need to um, break open your car a little bit the um, easiest way on the model x is um, actually on the right side where the autopilot is uh, there is a plastic cover you can remove the plastic cover and it's wide enough to unplug the autopilot uh, with a factory connector uh, which is a round connector and then if you have your own crafted um, uh, Fakra to Ethernet uh, cable, mm -hmm. you can use that to uh, connect on the network and to uh, connect to the uh, central display, although it is um, protected uh, on the network. So uh, Tesla also gives a bounty if you find a way to get root um, uh, remotely on their internal network. So they you get a $10,000 uh, reward or something like that? So that's what they give uh, for people who um, disclose their root methods uh, to them. Um, I have not personally found a method. Um, I'm also not very interested in searching such a method. I could stumble across some something like that, but um, then obviously the problem is, um, yeah, uh, do you want to keep it for yourself so you are certain you will keep on getting root? Or you go for the ten thousand, and uh, or just go for the responsible way, so that people can. I mean, it's of course very normal that normal human beings don't have access to it. Okay, but um, so there, there's one thing is to get ne uh, connection to the network. But isn't there a very easy plug which uh, everybody at the service center uses, uh, where you can connect uh, to the network? That's correct, but this one is blocked. So um, this one used to be. Um, um, used to be an easy access point for, for people, but there is actually uh, something blocking it. Um, the service center can actually unlock it uh, remotely, yeah. and then uh, they can use that uh, to gain access. So, okay, so that's the reason why I have to go in there. Okay, so show me the the cable you created uh, to to get access to it. So first, I have to go to the uh, to the um, uh, the autopilot system, and then let's take a look at that. And on one side you just have a normal Ethernet cable, and then here on this side, this is what what goes into the uh, what goes into the uh yeah that's the factory connector yeah 
um, oh yeah so that is that is something you just buy and you solder this uh, you solder this together this is a standard this is a standard uh, cable out of the automobile but you have to solder it yourself well you you, you can even uh, buy this as a as a so-called Tesla service cable on eBay pre-soldered um, where it's uh, better connected than them. Yeah, connected to my laptop and then I go into terminal services there you have a page on your uh, on your presentation with all the IP numbers of the different systems and then what? Well the um, um, if you want to update the system? I want to update I want to update to version 9 okay so let's let's first I mean, we'll include some video footage uh, that you can see what version 9 does for you, but describe it in words first. So it is really the next evolution of, um, of car-human interaction, I would say. It's, uh, the car is, um, is doing all these features which uh, Tesla promises on their website for enhanced autopilot. For years. For two years now almost. Um, so, um, and it is really uh, next level. So it means that the car uh, will... Um, know which lane it needs to take to switch highways. It also can take itself um, on ramp and off ramp uh, for the highways. When there is a speed difference uh, between the car in front of you, it can automatically overtake this car. Um, it doesn't currently switch back to the right. Yeah. So that was a little feature. So it basically, say if you say go 120, it will go automatically to the left uh, and, and take over other cars. It won't go to the right. Elon, we love that feature for, you know, we, we don't need it now. But next, 9.2. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why it's not ready yet, I guess. Eh? So, um, yeah, they didn't release it yet. So, also, the, um, there is some mapping, extra mapping, which is um, being done, uh, which is available already for some highways in the U.S. Um, this extra mapping information is not there yet. It's probably based upon the fleet learning which they do with the normal uh, cars. And it describes how to go from one uh, highway to the other highway and to make that more smooth. Yeah, and, and the, the exact uh, speed limitations are uh, very uh, fine pointed and so on, I'm, I assume. Yeah. Without this information, it works uh, al already amazingly, but I'm sure it, it will, uh, it does. Uh, That's the fun thing of owning a Tesla. It gets better all the time, you know, just uh, there's oh, it's everything about Tesla is fun. The CEO and his behavior is fun and the, and the car and, uh, and also the updates. Okay, so nine, really you want to have it because going from one highway to the other highway automatically and, and, and getting uh, to the, you know, overtaking another car is also very, very nice. And there's a bunch of other stuff on your mobile phone. Uh, you can pre-do uh, all the, all the uh, navigation and that kind of stuff. So... And some games as well, uh, some Atari games uh, hidden. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we can have fun with that. Uh, but let's first get 9.1 on our, uh, on our uh, system. Another feature as well, uh, which is uh, really improved, is Auto Park. Oh. That should be, because for Europe, it sucks. So I'm glad it's better. It sucked. It sucked. It, uh, yeah, it's mine fun. sucks and yours is great. It is fantastic. It, um, it goes fast, yeah. it goes exact. It parks better than me. Hooray! Hooray! So that's wonderful. Okay, so now get it on my uh, get it. On. How do I get it from uh, the moment that I connect it to uh, the computer to uh, the um, navigation system? Oh no, the, the autopilot system. How do I get it uh, updated? So then you tell that um, to your um, central unit. You give it. Um, you actually connect on the updater process. Um, certain port number, uh, which is on the display, yeah. on the presentation, will be somewhere in the movie. Two lines of code, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just launch the install command. Um, I'm not sure if it will keep on working because this uh, image I got, of course, indirectly somehow fr through Tesla. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Do I, have to up do I have to download the image, the new image first? Or is it uh, uh, is it uh, it down or it does it go automatically? So the the currently the I put the image on on my server. Um, I'm not certain if uh, Tesla if Tesla doesn't like it, they can tell me. I, I put it yeah. down. But do I first download the image from uh, your server to my computer, and then from the computer it gets through the terminal session to the uh, system? It's not uh, necessary because it needs to come from a web server. So it's uh, one line of code to take it from his server and to put it into the system. How long does it take the updating uh, process? 
so the um, the downloading is about one gigabyte so I would recommend that you use your own Wi-Fi so you don't overload the network of uh, Tesla and um, and yeah then it's uh, it will download depending on the speed maybe 15 minutes or something like that what's important is that as soon as it starts downloading plug your autopilot back in uh, because uh, the system will verify if all the systems are there prior to launching the update after the download is done. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So as soon as it starts down, after you've launched the install comments, yeah. uh, unplug uh, your laptop and put the autopilot uh, back in. And uh, then after 15 minutes, half an hour, it will um, give the regular um, update alert that the new update is ready. If you have the new app, it will also say on the app a new uh, update is ready. You can launch the update. It will take about 45 minutes, uh, an hour, depending. You on can launch the update in the normal way, that there's an update ready and you just double click and it installs itself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is too easy, guys. <laughs> just too easy. That's wonderful. I'm really excited. Oh, my God. Now, uh, once you've installed it, yep. um, obviously be very careful because this is development software. Always pay attention, pay a lot more attention than what you used to do when you're driving on autopilot. Um, you can get comfortable maybe too early, uh, consider it really uh, yeah. early release. Yeah, they, they expect that everything will work uh, good and you should be suspicious about that stuff. Okay, so then I install uh, version 9 and then I have a couple of other items on my menu, right? Well, um, so, um, of course, the entire interface will be new. Uh, so, now, the most important feature everybody wants to experiment with is the Navigate on Autopilot. Two lines of copy-paste. One is just to install the higher software, and two is to turn off uh, overtaking... How, how is that called officially? Navigate on Autopilot. Navigate on Autopilot to turn it on. So, then, and then you can see there's a lot of other things you can turn on and off. Eh? So, even if you don't have root access, you can do a lot. Well, um, the, the comment I, I put on there is um, just to turn it on once. Um, so um, there is a way to make it a little bit more persistent, but then you need to have root access. Um, so this, when you launch this comment, as I, uh, um, I described, then it will actually, after about 10, 20 seconds, restart the Qt application running on the main display. And um, in your router planning, you will have a button to say navigate on autopilot. And uh, when you do that, um, it will um, indicate that it wants to change lanes. Mm -hmm. And you have to confirm this by using your stock. By using what? The, 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 the turn indicator. Oh, okay. yeah. oh, you still have to do that. You still have to do that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, uh, at least with uh, the latest release I have, the 39.2.1, um, in which you explicitly allow this function. Okay. And then if you go to the settings of the autopilot, you can say customize autopilot, and you can um, uh, explicitly say that uh, you don't want to have confirmation on lane change. Mm -hmm. It will give you uh, an extra warning to double confirmation. Are you sure? This is beta. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, not only beta, I mean, it says, okay, are you very certain? Because it will do this at any time. It can start blinking. Yeah. Uh, the other people see that you're blinking. Yeah. Uh, they might um, take that into account. And they, they have some kind of uh, human car interaction as a result. Then the front camera, it's using the back camera. And is, is, is it also using the side camera? Did you figure out how many cameras it uses now? So um, I think that uh, currently it uh, uses all the cameras except uh, two side cameras. Uh, so the, um, the two repeater cameras on the sides are being used. Um, I'm not sure about the other two because they show up on my car as uh, not being calibrated. Uh -huh. So, um, but uh, yeah, the system works very well. It's, I think they are used all three, but I cannot verify that because I don't have root on my autopilot system itself. Um, so uh, it's very hard to, to get root on that one. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, it's easier to get root access to the entertainment system and to the uh, to the dashboard uh, the dashboard system, right? Yeah. So the the dashboard uh, behind the steering wheel, um, the private SSH key of that is leaked. Um, so um, you can use that to uh, gain root access to. Um, this uh, system obviously it's not a touch screen so you can only display stuff on it yeah. uh, but i can basically change the i can change the, the graphics uh, you know into something which i think is fun or i can put in nice uh, words on there so welcome or whatever 
Yeah, I, um, I, I've put some um, new images over the existing uh, images, um, which means that it's um, only there as long as the script runs. Um, so, um, which is fun because uh, I think it's important, you know, to not disturb the people at service centers and I just leave the, the, the original image intact. As if, you reboot, if you reboot, it uh, stops. Uh Mm -hmm. Well, unless you, you uh, make it out of starting, uh, so uh, you can put it uh, basically in, uh, in the cron tab. Can it, um, uh, you say, I can basically get access through the, uh, on the right hand side to the autopilot system, can I make a permanent connection to the network? Yes, uh, then you have to um, build in a switch. Uh, so you need to find power somewhere. Um, the uh, best way, and actually I didn't do it through the best way yet, but the best way is actually through the ODBC connector. There it has um, a very good amount of current and it's on uh, the left hand side uh, next to the uh, yeah. steering wheel. So that should be the best way to get uh, power from the system permanently. And then you need a switch. Then you need a switch, an internet switch, um, and you can just um, uh, uh, reroute the um, cable from the back of the central unit and the um, uh, instrument display to the switch and then also add uh, Raspberry Pi, for example, there. However, um, be careful because the, re the way I did it originally was by taking power from the USB port of the, um, of the central unit and then the service center got into problems because um, when the update is taking place, yeah. it restarts the central unit ah. and then it loses power to the switch and it cannot communicate anymore to the, to the unit behind. So that is not a, that's not a good, uh, okay, so you have to get it from the, the, the normal port uh, for that. Okay, so um, you, you, uh, there is a website you have and is there also for you, the, the, what is the name of the website? Uh, freedomev.com so freedom freedom for freedom yeah. and ev for electric vehicle yeah. uh, what can i find on there so um i've put uh, some small movies i put a hit up uh, link uh, with all the source codes um, of uh, making colors fade on your screen yeah also romance modes i put in there i um i put a conversation script in there so on the last presentation i uh, actually had a conversation with the car uh using um ubuntu stick uh, ch rooted with ch rooted um i have uh, it's my goal i also want to make a new version of the christmas show um but um i'm not there yet so um i've i've been focusing too much on uh, on this new firmware now instead of uh, adding new stuff uh, yeah I mean, you ha you already have the root access for that central unit. So, and in principle, you can open doors and close doors. I have not tried it yet. So the problem is uh, for that I need to send uh, messages on the canvas. I can do that, but I don't know the exact CAM codes. Um, I saw there is uh, a web not encrypted the CAM uh, the CAM bus. No, the canvas cannot be encrypted. Uh, CAN is really like an old-fashioned um, auto industry messaging bus, um, and there's no encryption on that uh, on that bus. So. We only need to find out the the, the, address, the addressing of the different parts and the uh, and the command structure. Yeah, indeed, yeah. Mm -hmm. We can make our own Christmas show now. So the, <laughs> the next thing, of course, is to basically can we uh, can this car also be driven from remote? Um, well, um, when you are using uh, the summon mode, yeah. it is already driving remotely. So the, I think the answer is yes. <laughs> it goes from there but I mean let's first I just want to have my version 9 a little bit earlier but it's really fun now uh, last thing we're going to discuss is what Tesla told you you know you be, you are an, uh, an ethical hacker you are you don't want to do anything which is dangerous or unresponsible how did Tesla react uh, when you were doing this so they um, well first uh, contact was of course with the service center um, and this was a great experience um, they were very forthcoming of course they didn't want to give me root which I found a sad, sad thing but um, uh, when I came to them and I said I had um, forgotten to put some screws in there and didn't know where to put them they just uh, fixed it for me and um, and now before this conference they sent me an email saying um, okay register yourself as a security researcher and and um, this means your warranty will not be voided. We will not sue you. Uh, we will uh, help you if you if you um, uh, break your car um, several times, even if needs be. So uh, it's super friendly. Yeah. Yeah. And then also a bounty program. If you do find anything which is basically worrying, then you they reward you. And that is also, uh, yeah, so they're extremely responsible and pleasant. And uh, did they also say, what don't we want you to do? Uh, not yet. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I'm just, uh, you know, 
are experimenting. Some people um, in the in the hackers community, um, they they told me to do to be careful for certain things, um, but um, till now, directly from Tesla, nothing. Um, Feedback-wise, uh, which was for me scaring or, or, or anything, no, only friendly uh, response. There's a great story about Jeep and Tesla, which got hacked at the same time. So uh, people uh, hacked into the bus, used the bus, got into the car, could accelerate the Tesla, could stop, could brake, could do anything, even remotely. The same with Jeep through the entertainment system. I mean, Tesla, you had to go in the bus. But there, there you could go in the entertainment system through Jeep and then get to the motorcycle and also basically stop the car and accelerate. Tesla said, wow, come over, and they gave them tickets, they gave them 10,000 euro, had 500 people in the audience and applauded for them, and three days later there was an over-the-air update, and what did Jeep do? I don't know. Sue them. They basically <laughs> immediately put lawyers, they said, uh, we're going to sue you, blah, 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 even though they were ethical hackers, wow. and everybody had to go, for six months later, six months later there was an update, and everybody had to go to the dealer center and for free, with a USB stick, got an upgrade. So this is the 2018 way, you know, to do the old way and the new way. Yeah. But uh, you're, 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 you'll be feeling very sympathetic and you don't want to do anything which is irresponsible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, um, that's correct. I think um, Tesla is doing the right thing. I do hope that they will give uh, root access to uh, <laughs> security researchers who register. Uh, in that way, um, also the, the current uh, known root exploits, I'm um, sure they will be given to, to Tesla because it's stupid that they are remaining hidden. Um, and it can be benefit everybody. Okay. Hey, um, any idea about the quality of the software that you saw, or have you ever? Uh, how good are they in from a security point of view? If you uh, if you analyze them, um, so. Um, I do also security audits um, for Linux on, on uh, embedded systems and um, uh, there's always room for improvement of course. Um, so there are a few things they could do to improve stuff. Um, they already did a very good job and, and, and often um, when explaining architecture I use their architecture as an argument, uh, extra argument to a customer to say it's better to do it in this way. Um, but yeah, there is of course always uh, room for improvement. No, but they're very good. They, they are software boys. They are software boys who created the car. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and and also with respect to um, to the uh, the back doors, um, also I think the last uh, half year there has been a significant improvement in the in the security of the system. Uh, they must have hired some extra good guys, I think, uh, and uh, yeah. Um, uh, it's uh, and there are some some strange things, of course. Uh, so, for example, the the, the central display, um, the the kernel isn't. Uh, so it's it's a turn display, and and it's not the kernel which has turned this. It's the Qt application, uh, which actually is in user space uh, been been rotated. So uh, well, I must say, I mean, is a, I, they have been extremely slow in updates. You know, uh, if you look at how the how the screen looks. They were saying, oh, we're going to uh, Android, we're going to have an app store, we're going to have this, we're going to have that. They didn't do anything of that. I mean, they and, and they promised to do full autonomous driving. They had this fantastic video uh, online. I immediately sold my version 1.0 after three months <laughs> and bought a new one. It was the most expensive update I ever did. And then I had a year long, a really bad version because they had a quarrel with uh, Mobileye. But they are not updating that part of the business very fast. Yeah, um, I think it's also um, because of the fact that I was also a bit frustrated that um, that there were no f new features on the um, on the central unit and so on. Yeah. That I, I I wanted to do do stuff myself, and and that's also why I created this Freedom EV project. I mean, uh, uh, Elon Musk also said, well, may maybe we'll add karaoke mode. Uh, personally, I'm not that much interested in karaoke mode, yeah. but in the open source community, there are people who like it. There is plenty of software available uh, for it, and it can be easily integrated. Have a look at karaoke. Yeah, that this means that if you have uh, music playing, that also it displays the text, so you can sing along in the car. Oh my God! Okay, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that sounds like an Asian thing to do. Uh, so, hey, if uh, we we uh, do, you also have a forum where you can discuss things. Uh, where are you? Uh, where are you on the Tesla board? 
so um, on the Tesla Motors Club, um, uh, there is uh, some room to discuss, of course. Also on the Freedom EV, there is um, a, um, a, a way to, to exchange um, things and, and, and information. Yeah. So I hope that uh, this will get a little bit alive. Now, coming back to the open source software, uh, in version 9, there is this Atari emulator uh, with a few games. Uh, this is actually just an open source um, project, um, main, which they in integrated. Yeah. And um, this is, of course, way fun. It's, it's really nice. But there are 10,000s of in op interesting open source. That's why we want an app store. So that we want to have it in a nice, easy way so that normal human beings can add things to it. Yeah. That's what I want to build with Freedom of E, basically. Yeah. Let's do that. And that's the way in the contact with you? Uh, I mean, is your, e uh, your contact details are on that website? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jasper. Okay. Thank you very much. Hey, the slides of uh, the presentation of today, where can we find those? On SlideShare. So, yeah. And also on Freedom uh, EV. Um, I'll put a link on Freedom EV, yeah. <laughs> SlideShare, they are there. Under which name? Uh, Yen Nyans is my name. Um, so uh, if you search for Tesla Hacking Presentation Utrecht Watts, I'm sure you'll find it. That's the name of the title. So. Enjoy the weekend. <laughs> Did you like this video? There's more where this came from. Subscribe and click the bell to get notified about our new videos.